congrats again to the newlyweds, and I hope everybody has a full drink because it is time for every wedding speech ever! Hi everyone, um, I hope you're all having as much fun as I am tonight. For those of you who do not know me, I am the maid of honor. I am the groom's brother. Uh, he felt obligated to make me the best man, even though we are not close at all. I'm the bride's father. <laughs> and this is the first time I'm seeing my ex-wife since the divorce, so I'm desperately trying to look good. I'm the groom's mother, and uh, I, 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 I just want to say... This day is all about Lauren and Casey, except for the next five minutes, which will be about me living out my dream of being a stand-up comedian. I wasn't exactly sure how to convey how much you two mean to me, so I wrote this poem. I just spent four days with my brother and his actual friends. It was bad and not fun. Everyone would have preferred if I wasn't there. Casey and Lauren, your love is true. Casey and Lauren, I wish only the best for you. The dictionary defines soulmate as a person who's perfectly suited to another in temperament. And that's just like Casey and Lauren. I love my baby. Casey and Lauren, you will be together forever. Casey and Lauren, seeing your love makes me feel light like a feather. And now I will continue for 10 more minutes. <laughs> I can't wait to take my brother down. I remember this specific shitty thing he did to me when we were little that I should be over by now. You're really more like a sister to me than a best friend. Seriously, what am I going to do now that you're married? I am hanging on by a fucking thread right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy. Growing up, Lauren loved the play Annie. Maybe that's why she always looked at me as her daddy warbucks. <laughs> that's right, I'm gonna keep coming up with unfunny ways to remind everybody that I paid for this wedding. Do you remember what happened at Horseshoe Lake? And who can forget that one time on Bell Tower Hill? I will keep alienating everyone else by vaguely alluding to things that only the two of us experienced. I think we can eat right now. Now I'm gonna raise some red flags. Uh, here's a story about your husband's first girlfriend who he treated like absolute shit. I'm now going to embarrass you in front of your family by hinting at some wild night we had in college at a sex party where we were both trashed and high out of our fucking minds. Oh, oh, here's another story about your husband hating women. Here's a joke about how you'll probably get divorced, but I'm not paying for the next wedding. I am so excited that I get to be a grandma. <laughs> Thank you so much for letting me be a part of your love. Wow, I'm just realizing how that was the weirdest way to end this speech. Now you take care of my little girl. Make sure she stays out of trouble. You're the new man in her life. And other statements that sound nice but are actually super misogynistic. Yeah. Hi, it's Katie Mirovich from College Humor. If you want to subscribe, click over here. And for more fun stuff, click over here. And if you want access to College Humor's secret site, make sure you send your social security number, your credit card information, and your mother's maiden name in a private message to me.